This is the Fantasy Road Show. Welcome in, roadies. We're back. We missed you. You know, this is this has been crazy. This has just been crazy. Uh, we, we had two days. Now we're not doing two days, and I feel like we're hardly in this uh, studio anymore. So, uh, welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Road Show with your hosts truck and calls you can find me on twitter at fantasy underscore truck or you can find him on twitter at calls underscore sports make sure you follow the show at fantasy road show and check out the sub stack the fantasy road show dot sub dot com all of our weekly articles written by calls will be posted on there uh for your enjoyment and for your uh, benefit so calls how you doing today buddy what's going on what's uh you know week one is in the books how you feeling? Are you done with fantasy football already or what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's probably worth just talking about because it's going to eventually come out anyways. But <laughs> the cycle of fantasy football that I go through every year is I just fucking hate it by the end. <laughs> By week one, it, by the end of the like, season, fuck. by the end of the season, I say I hate fantasy football and I'm done and I'm not playing anymore. Um, and that happened for me this year, week one. <laughs> oh my god! Um, you got a bitter calls over here, bitter calls. Which, like, I mean, I, 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 I would have to look at you know the various leagues I'm in, but I did relatively well. Um, it's just like JK Dobbins, Mr. Yeah, that was a tough, like, tough loss, tough loss like that just hurt. Um, there's so much heartbreak involved and in like, I don't know, I, to be honest, like, I think I'll be done with redraft at the end of this year. Oh, really? I, I love best ball. I love fantasy, but like anything in between, I, it's not for me. So I could see my portfolio completely changing after this year i just fucking hate redraft like <laughs> i just do <laughs> i'm sorry like i don't anyways we we can we can get more into that as we get into the episode but yeah, yeah it was a I crazy mean, week before um, we get into it let me crack open a celly here yeah i got one i got a peach you got vibe. one nice a little yeah. cheers i got a little tropical vibe what do you got peach vibe nice nice yeah. Calls. How about let's make an announcement? Uh, let's make an official no. announcement after. No, not yet. No, let's just get into. Okay. Let, let's get in. Let's let's get into the episode here. Let's start talking reactions. Um, it's just been such a crazy fucking week. Let's just let's hop into some football. Yeah. Uh, buckle up, everybody. Yeah, this is about to. Buckle. Buckle. Uh, So where do you want to start? I mean, this is this has been I top feel like down. huh? Top down. You want to just what do you mean top down? Thursday night. Oh, 12, just go 12 o'clock games and like, yeah, it's just top down. All right, down. so Thursday night um uh Lions Chiefs kind of old news by now, but it's like man, that was such a that was such a great game to start the season. Like when I was watching that, uh, having an exciting football game go down to the wire is just to me the the way a football season should start. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the line the lines being able to pull that victory off. Um, you know, a lot of people saw it coming without Kelsey and without Jones. But uh, I mean, what stood out to you in that game? Like, I mean, as expected, that that game was nothing crazy. I mean. For me, uh, that's ex that's what I expected with the Chiefs early on, uh, early in the season without Kelsey and Chris Jones. I mean, I said before the game, that's probably your two biggest pieces on each side of the ball, not named Mahomes. Yeah. Um, so the way that changes the offense, the way that changes the defense. Uh, to be honest, the defense I thought played outstanding without him, but still, like it, it changes things a lot. Yeah, for the Lions um, to only score 14 offensive points, you know, that's – Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so here's my – like, if I'm a Lions fan, I think I'm probably super happy from – they haven't had they, – they haven't beaten on the road on a banner night to start the season, The you know, a championship team. So, like, for them, 
you got to be super happy with that win. But oh, like, yeah. looking at the football side of things, I think they have a lot of shit to work on. I wasn't very impressed with that to be on with them, to be honest. Yeah. Like if their Jersey was not Detroit lions and like what the fan base has been through the last, you know, X amount of years. Yeah. Then I, I would not have been as happy with the win as they probably are. Um, just based on football. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I just thought that they could have, I just didn't think they were as clean on offense. Um, obviously they made big plays and held Patrick Mahomes to, you know, six second half, um, points and, and whatever else you want to point to, but offensively, I thought they could have been a lot sharper. So would you, um, let me ask you a question. Would you say it's more likely that the chiefs lost the game or that the lions won the game? Definitely Chiefs losing the game. I mean, if Tony catches that ball, they, any of the balls, but the ball at the end, if he just if he caught that last ball, they lose 23-21. Yeah, I um, agree. So, I mean, like, they were handed the game a couple times where they should have ran away with it, and a team like – someone like Patrick Mahomes, like, you just can't do that. Um, yeah. So, to me, it was like, yeah, you squeak out a one-point win, but you probably should have lost that game seven out of ten times. Um, I mean, the fact that Tony didn't catch that ball is just insane. It was in his hands. So, um, you know, if you're sitting there near Mahomes, you're just thinking like, whatever. I mean, it's, most of the time that's a catch and that's a game one. Uh, not having Kelsey in the lineup and having a bunch of ragtag group of wide receivers, you know. <laughs> Kadarius phony. Yeah, like a lot of time. <laughs> I mean, Sky Moore too sucks. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. They have a lot to figure out, which they will, of course, like they always do. Um, and how uh, about how about what we talked about early in the offseason? Clyde Edwards Lair comes out on the first drive and uh, you know, limits um uh Pacheco's usage. Like what Yep. Yeah, I mean that's uh that's you know, one of one of the wagers that I had uh for the roadies to look at was the 775 and a half under rushing yards for Pacheco game one. He comes out, he had 23. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as you said, as we had talked about, like Clyde is not all out of that offense. Like it's not a bell cow situation. Everyone's going to be used. It's going to be a by committee type, you know? Um, yeah. Not only like does Clyde come out and get the first, uh, first snap at running back McKinnon had the first reception of the entire game. Honestly, yeah. like I wouldn't be happy being a McKinnon owner either. I just wouldn't want that backfield at all. Um, you know, he probably would have gotten the best value on Clyde at this point, but like who knows moving forward, you don't want to start any of them in redraft at this point, you know? No, no, not, not at all. I mean, we, it was nice to see, <laughs> the game was in the middle of the action and Pacheco was getting a lot of work. They were kind of leaning on him later on when they figured out they couldn't really throw the ball. But yeah. uh, I think that there's no way that continues when Kelsey comes back. So yeah. So yeah, like that's concerning just quickly talking through each team. Um, I mean, I would be happy being a Montgomery and Gibbs owner. Obviously Gibbs was kind of eased into the offense, but he looked really good. Yeah. That's gonna, um, that's gonna off. increase. Goff had pretty good fantasy numbers. Uh, I think Amon Ra looked really – him and Laporta both looked great. Yeah, um, Laporta. Honestly, like, at one point in that game, I was, like, writing down or mental taking a mental note of Marvin Jones um, to have him uh, – to, to go grab him on waivers. But, like, he couldn't catch the ball. So, no. I mean, he, he, he should – a normal Marvin Jones, and he probably will come back and have a great game here soon, but, like, he was being targeted in some wide-open routes, and that's just because, like, you know, folk, def defense is focusing on Amon Ra and stopping the run, and, like, Marvin Jones should be, you know, uh, sh should be able to come out and have some big, high-production games, but he couldn't catch the ball. I mean, he was – Yeah, it was open. disappointing. So, uh, <clears throat> kind of, you know – Forgot about that, but I don't know. What else do you have to add for the Lions? That's kind of the summary that I had. Yeah, Laporta looked good. Uh, Amon Ra is still elite. Uh, you know, it was. I saw a couple clips where Goff just completely was oblivious to 
uh, Amon Ra being wide open down the seam, like just, you know, missed him on a couple opportunities. But um, it was in, it was intri- intriguing to see the Lions uh, play the way they did. And um, you could be pretty excited if you drafted uh, any one of those Lions, you know. But um, I, I think we covered that one pretty well. Let's let's move on. Uh, what game yeah. do you want to cover next? Uh, well, I was just going to say also then the Chiefs. I mean, I'm pretty much staying away from any of their offense at a redraft besides Patrick Mahomes. Um, they, the receivers, well, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 different receivers caught the ball, and <laughs> Sky Moore – had three targets, no catches, so he was the twelfth. Like uh, I'm just not starting any of those guys. Yeah, uh, including the backfield. So Kelsey and Mahomes, that's the only person. And right now for the Chiefs, um, yeah, let's move on to Panthers Falcons, Mister Bijan. Bijan Robinson, man, that was such like that highlight reel where he just like completely stopped on a dime. Like that was yeah, his touchdown. Yeah, that was just a, a thing of beauty. Uh, yeah. It really was. Um, what I found most intriguing was Tyler Algier's usage. I mean, they they damn near almost split the backfield 50-50. I know Bijan got a few more snaps than him, but um, for Algier to have, what, two touchdowns? I mean, he was the, um, you know, 15 carries, 75 yards, and two touchdowns. Like, I did not expect his usage to be that much. And, um, you know, as a little teaser, he might be on the waiver wire pickup. Uh, this week, but uh, I don't know. What do you, what do you see in that backfield? Um, I mean, that doesn't shock me at all. Uh, rookie week one, you saw it with Gibbs, like, yeah. Um, so just making sure Bijan, like Bijan's clearly the better back. So uh, that's and part of that was game. Um, part of that was like game script too. I mean, they. We're winning late in the fourth, and, and that's when Algier got quite a few of those carries. So um, as the season goes on, Bijan's usage will increase, and as games are tight or they're playing from behind, it'll be all Bijan. So it doesn't worry me at all. He looked outstanding. He's the way better back. He's probably the most top two or three in the entire NFL in terms of talent. He was outstanding um, in everything that, you know, I thought he would be so very happy to see that Algier. Yeah. I mean, like maybe they stick him in the goal line. I think after the season he had last year, they're, you know, still clearly like him and there's value there. So yeah. Um, Artie Smith just loves to run the ball. So I could, I could see him using this one, two punch for the whole season, but Bijan definitely his, his, uh, his share of the backfield should increase as the weeks go on. Just Bijan's like a top, three guaranteed running back this year um, yeah i still think he's going to be rb1 after that so it doesn't change any of that um for me it's like a little bit worrisome with pits and uh pits in london dude um, london playing 90 percent of the snaps he was on the field the entire game and just put up a goose egg <sighs> like i just uh bless you but i uh, that was that was tough to watch man and like Kyle Pitts came at the last, like towards the end of the game, had a nice thirty-four yarder. But other than that, either one of them weren't really used. Well, it's just like how they called the game, um, and they didn't need to do anything else. So um, that's a little concerning for those two. I mean, he had one hundred and fifteen yards and a touchdown, super efficient at fifteen out of eighteen. But um, everything was around the line of scrimmage. You know, six catches to, for Bijan, three to Algier, and then. Uh, Mac Collins and Pitts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they just, they're going to have to open that thing up eventually. And hopefully they do sooner than later for their sake. But as of right now, I'd be worried starting Pitts and London. I would be confident, obviously, with Bijan and Algier. Yeah. Uh, touchdown dependent. But if he gets 15 carries a game, he's going to be it, in a really good spot. So. Definitely a flex play moving forward, you know? Um, yep. So, uh, and then Carolina, man, I'll come out right out and say it. Um, Chuba Hubbard is the third down back. You know, um, I thought it, early on this offseason, Miles Sanders was going to be the three down workhorse, and I was wrong. Um, Chuba was used a lot more, although, you know, being the third down back, he still didn't amount to much. Miles Sanders still had four receptions for 26 yards. 
Um, still had 18 carries for 72 yards. Was still the running back you want to own, but I just I was concerned every third down seeing Chuba Hubbard on the field. Like I just I didn't like that very much. Yeah, that again. This is another game where I it went as expected for me. I thought Chuba was going to be involved. He was. Um, Hayden Hurst was the favorite target for Bryce Young. He was. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Nothing in this game shocked me at any at any point. I think Bryce will continue to get better over time. I think. Yeah, Hayden definitely Hurst- struggled. I think Hayden Hurst is going to have a good year. Miles Sanders, like, is going to be, you know, 18 carries, four catches. He's going to be used uh, and used all season. So, for me, it's more let's see how the Carolina receiving room uh, ends up settling in and who's the who's the guy to own there. But, again, nothing stood out for me um, or really went anything – uh, unlike I thought, you know, I guess Algier getting that much, but again, game strip, game script controlled and rookie running back of Bijan, like doesn't shock me. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> that's, that's, that, that's that game for me. What, what, what's, are you good? No. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I agree with you. <laughs> kind of went right. according to script. Uh, Bengals, Browns, Browns oh, defense God. is awesome. That defensive line is as good as advertised. Dude, that game um, was so hard to watch. Like I'm sitting there watching football on Sunday and I'm, I'm just every drive. I'm like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. What the, f-? like you get that bag, you get that money and then you go out and have a performance like that. It's just, uh, it's rough. Not a good look. Uh, his worst, his worst game as a, as a, as a professional. Um, but yeah, man, that Browns defense, they're fucking stout. Yeah. That's again, this one didn't surprise me too much. Obviously Burrow putting up three and having the worst career game. Like that's not, that's unfortunate. I, I, you know, I did, um, have Browns like plus two, um, for our soup, me and me and bricks super contest. So like, I think towards the end of the week, we both had Browns winning that game just from, Burrow being out, the Browns. He's never really had a good game in his career. I think he's now like one in four against the Browns. Um, so I mean, like he's he's always struggled against the Browns. And yeah, at home week one after not really, you know, practicing with the starters all preseason. And um, honestly, like. This is that that's the perfect game for the Browns. Like if they don't have to throw the ball much, 154 yards and a touchdown, one interception for Watson. Um, he did have that rushing, you know, he, he had rushing upside and scored on the ground, which was uh, good for Watson owners, which we have some uh, quite a few shares of. But yeah, if they don't have to throw the ball a lot and they can just pound it to Chubb and play great defense that's that's how they want to play football so yeah i'm i was i I was happy with what i saw from watson i mean if you look at the stat line it doesn't look great you know um you know almost a little a little maybe a little more than a 50 percent a completion percentage 150 yards one touchdown one interception um but the fact that he just kind of looked a lot better than he did towards the end of last year and that was intriguing to see um i was happy with that yeah, so I don't even think it necessarily doesn't look great. I think it looks fine. Um, just seeing the seeing the score twenty four to three, it's like okay, so they controlled the game, ran the ball a lot, and just didn't really have to do much because they were in total control all game long. Ran the clock, won the football game. Um, you know, it, like you're saying with Watson looking good, feeling comfortable. I mean, saw Elijah Moore, Cooper, both involved all the guys you want to see involved were to not the craziest extent because of the game script, but yeah, you know, in tight games or when they're forced to throw more, I think we would both say we have confidence in Watts Watson being able to deliver there. He was a top five quarterback this week. I think he was number five overall quarterback this week Yeah, and he didn't even really throw the ball. So um, I I think I'm confident as a Watson owner, and really any of these guys on the Browns went as expected, looking confident there. Um, and the Bengals, I mean, I'm not 
let's put it this way. I am not in, I'm not worried about Joe Burrow. I'm not worried. We already know what this offense is, so I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah. Um, they're going to, you know, uh, let's look at their schedule. They have Ravens. So you have to come back strong. They're going to have to come back strong in week two. Otherwise you go in two to two divisional. Um, yeah, that's a two, rough two start. divisional, two divisional guy, uh, teams that are going to be at the top with you. Um, that's not good, but you know, they need to bounce back in week two in that game against the Ravens. And then you don't even remember week one literally at all. So yeah. that's it. That is an important game, but you know, let's say you even drop that. You go and two. You have Rams, Titans, Cardinals, Seahawks. Who like fuck you, Gino? You suck. You got <laughs> killed by the Rams. You're a little bitch. Um, so you know you could very easily be four and two, and you're you're you know you're four and two going into week seven as yeah a team that's been in the AFC Championship. You know how many years straight? So yeah. So even if they do lose yeah. next week, they they can still bounce back. But it's four just and two. Easily. Yeah, but to lose your first two divisional matchups, that's that's a rough start for someone who we expect to be uh, to to win the division and make it to the Super Bowl. So um, keep an uh, eye out on um, keeping it. Yeah. You know, keep an How eye about, out. Um, uh, you know, Nick Chubb involved in the passing game, four receptions. I was uh, happy to see that, uh, and more so Jerome Ford, fifteen carries, and Nick Chubb had eighteen. Like we talked about this all off season when we were drafting Jerome Ford, like the I, I don't actually years. know when were those, when, when were those carries were the, I'm guessing they were all fourth quarter, right? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, probably later on in the game. Uh, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head exactly when those carries came or the majority of those carries came, but I would imagine um, yeah. towards the end of the game. Uh, but still it's intriguing to see um, 15 carries from a backup running back that yeah. uh, we were heavily invested in this off season. Yeah. I don't know. I, that doesn't mean a lot to me, to be honest. Cause like if they were up by three touchdowns in the fourth quarter and he got eight to 10 carries, it's like, that kind of, can't really, it. yeah, for sure. So that Garbage could also time. be, uh, and I, I don't, I'm saying, I don't know cause I didn't watch the game, but I, think i saw something that was like heavily out carried um until that point so that probably re also ryan relates to why his yards per carry was so low is because at that point in the game they were just stuff in the middle and they're just you know running clock so that doesn't worry me either yeah nothing about like i'm fine with ford he's clearly their rb2 so that's great but like we'll see what a game what a competitive browns game looks like and how that offense changes so you know you're at steelers week two they obviously got fucking housed by the by the niners but you know that's gonna yeah. be a tough tough Browns steelers you know we'll we'll know a lot more about ford and his usage i think after this week yeah. um because that game should be more competitive and you know we'll see um but yeah, their their schedule is week two at Steelers and their home three straight games: Titans, Ravens, Niners. Um, so we're gonna find out really quickly what kind of team the Browns are this year. Yeah, that's a, those are some tough matchups there in the first couple of weeks. So, uh, all right, what what game do you want to go on to next? Um, we let's talk about the Jags Colts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Another game that doesn't surprise me very much. I got uh, nervous watching that game, man. Yeah, th this game didn't surprise me. I mean, obviously the Colts came out, played well early, and um, Anthony Richardson looked better than I had expected. Um, yeah. But, um, I mean, again, Jags by double digits. Um, these teams play each other like weirdly close, oddly close usually. Yeah, so that's, that's what happened. Um, I, and I say nothing shocked me here is because, well, a couple things shocked me. One thing yeah. specifically, but this is what we thought with ETN. Like Bigsby didn't look good. He had his little role, but like it's ETN's backfield. It will be ETN's backfield. He's clearly the better running back and his production is going to, you know, look 
far superior to tanks tanks didn't have a touchdown goal line touchdown but like he didn't look good otherwise um no. so nothing to worry about there calvin ridley our wide receiver one he is who he thought he, he is beast the thing that was surprising was kirk not being involved on two wide receiver sets so that's a little bit to worry about as a kirk owner yeah it looks uh, like zay jones is the wide receiver too now yeah, um, so I don't know what else you have to add there. That's a pretty, I, uh, pretty, um, pretty yeah, I will, game. I don't know. No, no, definitely on the Jaguar side. Like uh, the one thing that stood out to me was obviously Kirk's usage, but um, I thought Trevor was going to look a little bit better in this game. You know, he had that interception, and like um, the Colts defense, I didn't think was going to be that good. So, um, you know, I thought he was going to have a better game. Think- Trevor, I, again, I didn't watch the game inside and out, but 241 and two touchdowns for the first game, first away game of the season, I don't think that's like a bad game by any means. No, and I didn't say – yeah. put up 30 points. I was just – I was envisioning him having a better game than he had. That's all. Against the Colts, who I thought were going to be really bad. So I just – I thought he was going to have a better game. He still had a good game. But I just thought it was going to be better. And uh, what, three hundred yards and three touchdowns? Yeah, I was. Uh, that's what I was anticipating from him. Yeah. I was expecting a this, you know, week one, boom, here's Trevor Lawrence. You know, welcome to the elite club. So um, I didn't get that. Uh, although he still had a great game, and the Jaguars pulled it out. But like halfway through that game, it was a tight game, man. And I was just nervous that somehow the Colts were almost going to be able to pull that off. But uh, the Jags yeah. ended up winning later on. But um, yeah, man, Anthony Richardson played played pretty well. Like he kind of he kept up with Trevor. Like the whole game, he was had had the same amount of completions, same amount of yards. Like, and he just he looked a lot better than I thought he was going to look. He just he did. And then getting Michael Pittman involved more. Eleven targets for Michael Pittman, eight for ninety seven and a touchdown. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I'll take the L on that one. I was not drafting Pittman anywhere, and. Um, yeah, Pittman looked really good. Uh, the running backs are trash. Deion Jackson, uh, Evan Hall. Shocker. Yeah, trash. Uh, Except for they my need, boy. They need... <laughs> Except for my boy who, who who was inactive week one, Zach Moss. You're going to see him yeah. come in. He's going to be the running back. I, I just think they need to they need to sign someone else. They just can't, they, you know, unless they – They're unless going they... to compete. Yeah, that's the question. Which, like, but they, I don't they think they're good. going to still. But they still looked good this week, and uh, you never know. Maybe uh, maybe they, they try to do something to uh, turn it around. But, yeah, that's kind of all I got for the uh, Jags-Colts. Yeah, so, I mean, you're 303 for Trevor. He wasn't too far off. Week one, weird week one away at Colts, team that usually plays him close. I'm, that doesn't discourage me. Now they have five straight home games. Really? Well, Two of those are away, so they're neutral, but they're the oh. home team. Yeah. They're uh, they're overseas, but they're gonna have Chiefs Texans these next two weeks. So obviously, like that three hundred and three Trevor that we expect to see a lot this year. Um, week two and three is you know, we we can start to see that. So yeah, that's a winnable um, game against the Chiefs I, after what we saw week one. Yeah, I mean, like I just think. I think these are the two weeks where you can hold him accountable to his 303 if that's is that, if that's the kind of quarterback you think he's going to be this year because yeah. a lot more comfortable at home, knock off that week one rust, um, two teams that you should be able to put up points on. So we'll keep an eye on that moving into the next week. But I don't, I'm good on this game if you are. I am Gucci. What do you got next? Uh, next is the Bucks and the Vikings. Hell yeah. Uh, Baker in the Bucks, baby. Yeah. Baker in the Bucks. To be honest, like this is another game. I, there is a lot of craziness in this week, um, but we haven't gotten to it quite yet. Like this was another game that I thought was going to be higher scoring. I, I really thought it was going to be very high scoring, but uh, it turns out the Bucks defense is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I. I don't know what else to say about the Vikings other than like, this is exactly what I thought was going to happen to the Vikings. <laughs> you lose to a shitty bucks team week one. And then here comes the quicksand. You got to go to Philly on a short week. Oh, uh, and then you're playing the chargers 
week three, like yep. here comes Owen three. Um, so I, I don't know, like not good for the Vikings. That's all I have to say there. No, um, I was excited to see, uh, uh, Jordan Addison played really well, heavily involved. Um, and Justin Jefferson still had what a hundred yards in the first half. Like he's just, Justin Jefferson is that guy and you're, you should be happy you drafted him and, um, wherever you got him. So, uh, beast. Yeah, but uh, the only thing I would be worried about is that he's going to be on a team that's going to be two and eight two two and six after after the week eight and they're going to just be they're going to be losing their shit like they're expected to win this division and you're going to be very much in last place after yeah they're, the first yeah. eight weeks like that could unravel yeah, expected to be in contention, but I mean they're going to be losing a lot of these games. So I think Kirk, you know, from what we saw, you know, but he let's was... talk about football though. Like it, it, Kirk Cousins doesn't have a guaranteed contract after this year. If they're two and eight, yeah. if they're two and six after eight weeks, you're going to start hearing the is Kirk Cousins going to be back? Justin Jefferson didn't look happy on the sidelines, no. so that's like something no. to that that is something to worry about, like that that matters like that you know what i mean those yeah i would be yeah i'd be nervous if i owned him in dynasty 100 percent. well no i think this year in redraft i would be worried like oh really in dynasty i'm not worried at all who gives a shit he's still elite i'm worried yeah because like weeks eight through 13 towards the end of the year and then in the playoffs and you have a, a very unsteady locker room a relationship between Kirk and, and Jefferson that could change as they're not winning games and they need to like, they're going to move on from Kirk cousins after this year. And you're going to see some relationship strain late in this season. And how does that affect on, on field performance? I would not be comfortable owning Jeff, Justin Jefferson right now. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm on the other side of it. I, I totally comfortable owning Justin Jefferson right now. The Vikings are going to be losing these games. Kirk Cousins can, su- can support uh, an elite wide receiver, as we saw it. He had 100 yards in the, first, in the first half, like, and they lost this game. This game script could be very similar to the rest of the season. Kirk Cousins, to me, isn't going anywhere when this season. When they're two and six after yeah. eight weeks, that it's not the same as this game week one. Is my point. No, I, I understand, and they the relationship may struggle uh, off the field, but on the field, Kirk Cousins can still sling it, as we saw. Um, the team may not be winning games, but Kirk Cousins is going to be throwing to Justin Jefferson 12 targets this game. You're going to see that almost every game. Like I just think Justin Jefferson is still safe. I'm worried about him next year. Who's going to be the quarterback throwing him the ball? Is he going to be a competent quarterback yeah. in Dynasty? I'd be a little nervous, but I'm I'm okay with it this year. I'm worried about their relationship this season. Um, Alexander Madison is who he thought he is. He <laughs> sucks. Um, I've been preaching that for a long time. Yeah, he did, um, did score a touchdown, but had a, had a rough game. Uh, yeah, he sucks. Uh, <laughs> so I expect to see Ty Chandler over the course of the season eat into that role a little bit. Let's see how long they – you know. Uh, you would think that they would stick with Madison for quite a while, but yeah, if he continues to have 11 carries and 30 yards on the ground and uh, they're losing games and their, their season is completely out of reach. The, it's going to be interesting to see the Vikings be as bad as they're going to be this year with as a, high as the expectations as they're supposed to have your box scores are not going to look like this. I promise you. So uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on. Uh, You know, Thursday night is always tough. Um, I think it's going to be ugly Thursday night. Games are always ugly on Thursday night. So uh, we'll see what happens. That'll be a loss. Owen two. I I, I agree with you there. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Do you want to go on? Let's do the Titan saints next. I, I don't have much to say about this game. So uh, Rashid Shahid looks really good. Alave yeah. looks really good. 300 yards for Derek Carr. Um, you know, I, I don't know that Jamal Williams wowed anyone. I don't know that there's really anyone else there for them to go to. So until Kamara's back, it's his backfield. Yeah. Ty J Spears uh, out snapping 
uh, Henry on, or I think he was on every single third down and in the snaps were pretty close. So that was something to keep an eye on, but yeah, Tannehill looks like he's dog shit. <laughs> um, so yeah. they're going to have to figure something out there. I, I think the Titans are going to be really bad this year. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Uh, Derek Carr looked pretty good uh, week one with the Saints. Uh, Chris Olave is a beast. I mean, he he got off to a slow start in the game, but uh, I mean, once he got going, man, he 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 looks really really good. So um, very happy with his game. Michael Thomas looked better than I thought he was going to look. Um, got eight targets. That's pretty intriguing. Uh, you know, Michael Thomas is Michael Thomas. So um, I expect him have to have a couple good games throughout the season. But um, yeah, man. Uh, Derek Carr looked good, and Ryan Tannehill is dog shit. <laughs> it's just what a fucking cupcake season for the Jags, dude. You're literally gonna have like the three worst teams in the AFC in your division. So you, yeah. you, you're gonna be six and zero oh from that. Like, what an easy season for the Jags. Uh, hopefully, yeah. you know, hopefully they stay healthy. They're one of the top two seeds in the AFC, and they can they can compete with that stacked AFC North and obviously um chiefs so we'll see what happens yeah definitely niners steelers that shocked me that shocked you i believe like dude niners are fucking good really steelers, good. the steelers just didn't know what to do against that defense they couldn't, they couldn't do anything bro they couldn't yeah. run the ball like Pickett looked didn't look good like i just i mean that i mean granted I, I don't know. A after week one, Mike, who has a better defense, the the Cowboys or the 49ers? In your or opinion. The Jets. Or the Jets. Yeah, I mean, what we saw last <laughs> night, the Jets looked uh, stout. But um, it, to me, it's between the Cowboys and the 49ers. Dude, the Jets are fucking good. And they actually had a real – the Jets had a real offense that they – like Giants and Steelers, you can – there's glaring holes everywhere. The Jets, like, yeah, I, had I see what the best saying. offense in the in the NFL. Yeah, and they held them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really want to make any assumptions. Period. After one week, but those three defenses look insane. Um, I think the Niners probably just because of what we saw last year. But like, I think the Jets' defense is outstanding. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really have anything to say there. Purdy like looks like Purdy. Uh, he's pretty good. I, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I I don't think he's gonna have to do much, but it doesn't change my opinion that like he doesn't have to do much. <laughs> yeah, it's just um, a great team all around. I mean, yeah. So uh, Christian McCaffrey, beast. I you um, beast. Yeah, I I thought we would see more of Elijah Mitchell. Um, that surprised me. Um, he wasn't really involved as much. Uh, only got five carries. Christian He's coming off injury. Yeah. No, I know. But uh, he was healthy for the game, so I, I thought he we would see him. was out all of preseason, so I, that'll change throughout the season. Right? He, I, he didn't get a snap in, in preseason. Like, Mike, how, hey, how about you toot your own horn on Brandon Ayuk real quick, huh? Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and give us a little something? I just love Ayuk. I mean, he had an outstanding game. He's going to continue. Him and him and Purdy seem to have a very unique and nice connection. Uh, <clears throat> so that'll continue all season. If you're an IU owner, you're very happy right now. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. So I love that. Was all over that. Very happy I was. Um, yeah. I, we'll see what happens with the Steelers. It's a little bit worrisome. Deontay's now out. You got to rely on it. Allen Robinson as your wide receiver too. Um, Pickens will benefit from that. I just I, I want to see the Steelers start to look good. Again, don't make any assumptions after one week, but that was a really tough defense. And now you have the Browns, who are a really tough defense. So um, hopefully you can come out and do something against the Browns. Then you got the Raiders and Texans, so things ease up a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm not necessarily like turned off by this game by Pickett, like whatever week one against probably the best defense in the NFL. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I was I will say I, I'm um I, I did like what Matt Canada did with this game. You're going against the number one or a top tier defense 
and you had Kenny Pickett throw the ball 46 times. You like Kenny Pickett, like as you know, I know the Pittsburgh didn't do well, but Pickett still was throwing the ball a lot, which is in, which is intriguing to see. He was getting all of his receivers involved. Calvin Austin, Allen Robinson had a much better game than I thought he was going to have, but um, I will say that looked good. But I mean, Najee Harris, um, it's hard to run against this defensive line, so I'm just going to kind of toss that one away and uh, reevaluate Najee later on in the season. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean. This is going to be a tough game against the Browns, too, but we'll see. That I'm not too worried about Steelers' offense. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, Cardinals, Commanders, both teams are shit. I don't really have anything to add there. <laughs> um, uh, I will add um, the running back room for the Commanders. Okay, that was a swing and a miss, it looks like, for Antonio Gibson. Only three carries to Brian Robinson's 19. Um, I mean, still, no, 19 for 59. I mean, like, dude, exactly what we were talking about. Like, he's just nothing special. I I don't think it's a swing and the miss because, like, this is what we talked about is Brian Robinson's going to dominate the usage early. They're going to try to write it. My one worry with Gibson, as I you know said a million times is that the commanders are invested in robinson and want him to be the guy that they're gonna just give him a longer leash than they should so here again you see like they just wrote him and he wasn't good so at some point you're gonna have to look to other uh you know other avenues and that avenue is antonio gibson so hopefully sooner than later so a lot of the season doesn't get away from you but you know they didn't – commanders about, are not a good football team either. So. No, dude, how about how about Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas? Uh, yeah, I think Logan Thomas, the that was – like, that one didn't surprise me. Um, Samuel does. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, the Redskins love Curtis Samuel. Like, love <laughs> him. I don't know what it is, man. But, but uh, yeah, that was, was – involved. That shocked me. Terry needs to be more involved. He's a little banged up, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Cardinals are trash. I mean, all around. Uh, don't start any Cardinals. Um, how about uh, Zach Ertz having ten targets? Zach Ertz <clears throat> having ten targets. That shocked me. I couldn't believe that. Oh wow, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, until you just said it. That 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 was that was alarming for me. Um, I thought Zach Ertz was going to be completely irrelevant, especially coming off that injury. But um, still didn't do much with it. Only six for twenty one. So I mean, I'd still stay away from every Cardinal. Just period. I agree. Yeah. Um. All right. Ravens Texans. I feel so bad for J.K. Dubinsky. I think his career, I think his career's over. Um. I feel horrible for him. Uh. So I don't really know what else. <laughs> What else to say there? Uh, it was so Ravens, deflating. So deflating. Yeah. Ravens are going to continue to get better as the season goes on. That was week one in their new offense. There was you know, some good, some bad. Zay Flowers, 10 targets. He's their number one by far. So if you drafted Zay Flowers, you should be extremely happy. Um, it'll be interesting to see what how things shift with Mr. Mark Andrews coming back. But, um, I mean, losing Dobbins sucks. It'll be interesting to see where they pivot to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Nico Collins, 11 targets for the Houston, for Houston. That was really good to see. I, we were both high on Collins heading into the season. Yeah, that was great. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at in this game. Sucks yeah, Damian, yeah, Damian Pierce uh, didn't have as much of a stranglehold on that backfield as I thought. Um uh, Devin Singletary came in, which I mean, early on, this is what we were saying. They got Singletary for a reason, and they're going to use him. So, um, but uh, you know, with a different game script, expect that to look a little different. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I got for that one. And how about Zay Flowers, man? Zay freaking Flowers. Um, that was awesome. That was great to see. I mean, it seemed like Lamar had like fucking blinders on and was like only targeting Zay Flowers. It's kind of how he is. Yeah, I mean, he did that with Mark Andrews for years. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I expect that to look different when Mark comes back. I don't think Zay, you know, um, gets that large of a target share 
with Mark Andrews, but uh, it was just great to see. Zay, Zay looked great. Um, you know, his some of his highlights were just um, were just awesome. Um, as far as the backfield goes, Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, like it's going to be a timeshare right now, and I'm sure they're going to go and get Leonard Fournette or Kareem Hunt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I don't really know what to expect. It just sucks. I feel so bad for Jobbins. Yeah, and Lamar didn't really have that good of a game, like, you know, um, fantasy-wise, statistics-wise. Yep. Um, but the team was just winning, so, you know, All right. you don't have to do them too much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you take over for this next game. Um, we got Packers 38, Bears 20. <sighs> okay. All right. Listen up. The Bears fucking suck, okay? Point blank period, the Bears organization, the coaches, the culture, the fucking team, Justin Fields, I'm I'm about done with it, okay? I'm trying not to overreact. I'm trying not to, you know, read too much into week one, but fucking come on. We're at home against the fucking Packers. This was our opportunity. This was the fucking chance to take the North and to do something with it, and you fucking fall right on your fucking face, Fields. Right on your fucking face. You can't you can't take a chance down the field. The play calling was shit. The fucking defense was shit. I mean, this is gonna be a rough fucking season. A rough fucking season. If if Fields doesn't turn it around, I'm not saying that they, they can't, but it's he's on a steep fucking hill. A steep hill, Mike. And I'm just not excited. I'm I'm nervous for next week for it to look even worse. I, I'm just I'm I'm losing hope by the fucking minute in this in this in between week one and week two okay like i'm i was trying i didn't want to i didn't want to come too hard at the bears but fucking come on what what the fuck was that i'm sitting down watching the game at the bar surrounded by packers fans because i'm thinking oh this is gonna be great i'm gonna rub it in their fucking faces finally this is gonna be awesome no no i sit there with my fucking head down watching the game like come on this is just it was brutal every chicago fan out there i feel for you it sucks and uh I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know anymore. I don't. Even if we were to get the first first overall pick and get Caleb Williams, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. I don't know if that turns it around. I really don't. I'm just. I. I just. I thought Eberflus was going to be able to pull something together, and he didn't. And I just. I want to fucking. I want to cry every time I think about it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Bears are pathetic. Bears fans are pathetic. Uh, they're never going to be good. Um. So that's just that's just a fact of life. Um, I do want to <laughs> I do want to run through. I don't want to hear anything from you besides win or loss. Uh, but I want to run through this real quick. Okay. Uh, at Bucks. At Bucks. By the way, the Bucks played last week. To me, that's a loss. The Bucks defense looks really good. At Chiefs. Loss. Zero and three. Versus Broncos. That's a toss up, but fucking loss. At Commanders, we're gonna win that one. One and five. One and four. One and uh, four. Home against the Vikings. Loss. Home against the Raiders. They even looked fucking good the week one. Like I just, <laughs> I was really hoping they did. Right. But they did. Winner loss. Loss. At Chargers. <laughs> At Chargers. Loss, Mike. Move on. At What's Saints? the next one? Saints? Loss. Okay. Home against the Panthers. <sighs> We're going to win that one. Okay. <laughs> At Lions? Loss. At Vikings? Loss. Home against the Lions? Loss. At Browns? Loss. Home against the Cardinals. We're going to win that one. Let's count it and put it in the books. Home against the Falcons. I still think we can win that game. Okay. And then at Packers. I, you know, I'm hoping by then we can fucking go into Green Bay and fucking punch them right in the fucking mouth, but that's probably a loss. What was the record I just – what did, what did I just call? All right, so fucking after – Fucking four. Four after, wins. After one week – 
you your 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 prediction has gone from eleven wins in first place to four wins and last place. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens, man. You you watch what the fucking product that they put on the field on Sunday at home against the Packers. Yeah. It's just fucking trash. Yeah. Fucking trash. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my little rundown of that game. Um, I did have the Packers winning that game. I thought Jordan Love is pretty good quarterback. We saw that from him. 245 yards and three touchdowns. Aaron Jones was outstanding. Yeah. Um, so for me, this game went as expected. Um, however, I think as a Bears fan, I would be very upset with the play calling. Um, I don't think it's time to overreact yet. Give the season four weeks and then figure out, you know, where, where you actually are. But like, what the fuck? You have, you've seen good things from fields. You add a wide receiver one and then you don't throw the ball downfield. You only throw screens and you don't throw screens to your wide receiver one. To see him visibly upset on the sidelines week one is just like not and it's a, not, not it's a good not, look. It's not all on fields. Like, I just want that to be clear. Like, Fields is a talented football player. Maybe. Okay? Maybe, sure. You can say maybe. I think he's a talented football player. I will put my, my hey, name I think on that. I still think he can throw the ball, so throw the fucking ball. Like Exactly. Open up the, the offense. Coaching. Take some fucking yeah. chances. Change yeah. your play calling. <laughs> maybe change the offensive coordinator. Ch change something. Something. Yeah, you cannot yeah. go into week two with the same game plan you went into week one with. No, um, and the the defense is bad, so I, I don't know. Like to be honest, like my prediction probably changes a little bit. I had them at eight wins, and I think without going through this entire entire uh, schedule again, I think I'm probably at six or seven, um, but certainly more than four. I would think if you're going to be a four one team this year, you're in the Bears. You might as well be a one or two win team and go get a Marvin Harrison or someone. Um, but anyways, and um, I just, just to be clear, I'm speaking as an overreacting Chicago fan. Okay. Yeah. But like realistically, they probably win six or seven, but I, based on what I saw and based on the names, the teams that you just said, and from what I saw from them week one, it, well, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't feel good about those games. I just, yeah, well, if you lose it at Tampa this week, then you're going to start at least 0-3 and, and potentially 0-4. The Broncos are good. Um, or they're not bad. Um, and then, you know, then it's at Commanders. The team's bad, but you're away, and you're 0-4. Like, and, and you have a, to there's figure out things quickly in the NFL. Yeah, but there's a world where we beat the Broncos. There's a world where we beat the Bucks. Like, there's, there's still time for the Bears to turn it around somewhat and start looking decent, but – from what I saw, I just I am I I have I have no faith in the team right now. Little to no faith from what I saw on on Sunday. Yeah, they need to they need to figure it out. I I, I do. Before we move on, I do want to say, um, we there the, there was a missed opportunity on Sunday night. Oh God! Ryan Ryan and I were in front of our cameras. Uh, I in wasn't feeling I wasn't feeling too good. We were in the stooge. And we had Ryan in his Bears apparel about an hour after the game with a bottle of Jameson in hand and a beer in the other hand and was drowning his sorrows. Um, we decided it was not the best time to give our full NFL reactions episode. Whoa. However, I do regret and wish we had press play to get his raw, drunk reaction because I think he would have cried on camera and like taken three pulls of that jameson bottle but it, that, that could have um, gone viral it could have know, been a viral as, clip like yeah. that would have been well that was a missed opportunity and i'm sorry roadies that i didn't capture that we didn't capture that i i should have known better um i just saw the pain in his eyes saw the slurring in his words and just knew i wasn't on top of my game either and um we we punted we punted our reactions um <laughs> but yeah uh, missed opportunity. Let's move on yeah. to um, Raiders Broncos. Um, Broncos defense looks good again. Jimmy G is still a good NFL quarterback. 
Um, Jacoby, yeah, Jimmy, Myers, your best Jimmy friend, Jacoby, good. had a great game. Jacoby, how about it, man? Jacoby Myers, um, yeah, fucking great game. Like, I just, from what I saw on the field, I just, I really liked what I saw, man. I mean, obviously, the, that's not going to happen every game. Devontae Adams is is a much, much better wide receiver. But, um, obviously, uh, wasn't Adams being shadowed um, by um, uh, the corner on Denver? I can't think of his name right now. Um, what? Sertain? The corn- yeah, 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 Patrick Sertain. Um, I'm sure he was being shadowed the entire time. So, um, that's to be expected when you have a an elite corner covering uh, your best receiver the whole time. But uh, it, very intriguing to see, man. Uh, the Raiders played a lot better than I thought they were going to. I did pick them to win this game, so it was great to see. Um, and to me, the Denver Broncos didn't look very good offensively. Make that clear. Um, I would have liked to see them have a much better game offensively. And I guess the Raiders' defense isn't that bad either, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're also like one of the most injured teams in the NFL right now with Javante working his way back, Judy being out, Dulcich went down that game. Like, So those are three of the biggest weapons that they have on offense. Uh, I mean, Russell is 27 for 34, 117, 177 and two touchdowns. So that's not horrible. Um, and, you know, we just named their three biggest weapons as being either injured or coming back from injury. So I, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily throw in the towel there yet. Uh, defense is still good. Broncos, you know, they'll be there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and moving on to the Eagles Patriots. I don't have much to say here. If you want to go ahead and, Give your thought. Uh, I, I just want to start out by saying something that I noticed. Tom Brady's starting to really look fucking old. When I saw him on the TV, I was like, wow, okay, you take some time off football and you age like fucking like that, man. I just I that was the first time I saw him and was like, wow, you're you're an old man. You know, just want to throw that out there. But um uh yeah, man. Uh, first of all, Kenneth Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell is the starting running back for the Eagles. He is RB1. Um, and, Mike, I'll give it to you. Early on, early, early on in this offseason work that we put in, um, you were beating the drum for Kenneth Gainwell, and I just completely threw that in the garbage. I was like, there's no fucking way. You go out and get uh, DeAndre Swift. You go out and get Rashad Penny. There's no way Kenneth Gainwell is that guy. And sure enough, as the weeks went on, it, you know, we started seeing reports, and then we saw what happened on the field, man. I just Kenneth Gainwell, four four receptions, fourteen carries. Like the Eagles didn't play as well as certain people would have expected. But you know, you're in Foxborough. Um, it's always tough to play in Foxborough against Bill Belichick. So uh, understandable there. But man, Kenneth Gainwell <laughs> looked great. One carry for Boston Scott. One carry for DeAndre Swift. Like Kenneth Gainwell's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So we'll see how that changes week two. I think Swift will be more involved, but good to see Gainwell, you know, getting it early. Um, That was a pretty, that game went as expected for me. Um, Yeah. Uh, Kendrick Bourne. I was shocked by Kendrick Bourne. I mean, we saw last year, Mac Jones has a little connection with Kendrick Bourne. And it seems like he's wide receiver one. Juju sucks. Um, Hunter Henry played much better than Mike Gesicki. Um, they had the touchdown, uh, you know, six targets to Gasicki's three. So um, that's looking like a swing and a miss for me. I uh, really thought Gasicki would be used a lot more. But Hunter Henry, uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's involved. And then Ramondre Stevenson with the six targets uh, coming out of the backfield. It's like even with Zeke there, um, you know, still taking a, a chunk of the uh, rushes, Ramondre is still going to be heavily involved in the passing game, and uh, he's still going to be someone that's startable. So, um that's kind of my only takeaways. And Mac Jones throwing for over 300 yards, throw through 54 passes, completed 35 of them, 316 yards and three touchdowns, 300 yards and three touchdowns against the Philly defense. Yeah. The, the Ramondre um, yards per carry has to get better. 12 carries, 25 yards. The reception saved him for having a good day, but um, yeah, I mean, Hunter Henry, it's not shocking. He's was Mac's favorite target in his rookie season. Yeah. Um, so you just see that again. 
that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah, nothing really surprised me there. Uh, 300 yards on an Eagles defense is impressive, but like this game was, it, it, it was surprising at first when they didn't show up and then they came back into the game. It was 14 0 early, 16 0 early. Yeah. Um, so that was, I, I knew this would be a tight game, giving Belichick all off season to prepare um, the public, of course, how they view the Eagles. Um, public would be all over the Eagles, but like that's not really how the NFL works. So yeah. Belichick at home with all that time to prepare was going to give them trouble. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think Swift definitely chips into Gainwell's um, target share, his, his production split here uh, in week two. But we'll see what happens. Um, quick, quick week, quick turnaround. I think that probably plays into Swift's favor even more. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, let's uh, hammer through. We got Dolphins, Chargers, Rams, Seahawks, and uh, Cowboys, Giants to end up the Sunday slate. And we still have Bills, Jets. So let's get moving here. Yeah, it'll be a long episode, but a lot to cover, uh, important stuff. So um, Miami and the Chargers. Tua Tonga Valoa, beast, absolute monster. Him and that Tyree connection is legit. Uh, if you took a chance on him late in drafts, you're fucking happy. Um, I mean, what what else is there to say about the, the Dolphins, you know? Yeah, if they can stay healthy, they're going to be dangerous. Um I don't really have anything else to say about him. Tua looks awesome. I would have liked to see Jalen Waddle more involved. Yeah, it's 466 yards, three touchdowns, interception. Tyreek 11, 215, and two. Waddle, four for 78. Waddle's going to have, there's going to be games this season where Waddle's production looks like Hills and Hills looks like Waddle's. I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. Miami looks awesome. They're going to score a lot of points this year. I think same goes for the Chargers. Uh, and we'll just kind of see how these two teams play out. I think they're going to be both in the playoffs and talked about all season. So good to see a high-scoring, fun game with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the Chargers side, real quick, uh, Josh Kelly, Joshua Kelly, 16 carries, 91 yards, and a touchdown. Um, I just – I didn't think we were going to see that from Josh Kelly. We've never really seen much from Josh Kelly, and I, w I was shocked in that aspect. Um, Austin Eckler looked great, obviously, four receptions, 16 carries, but, um, you know, Josh Kelly's going to be involved, it looks like, and, um, you know, he's someone to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah, uh, wait, he'll be on the waiver wire, and it looks like you should get him. Uh, especially with the ankle injury to Eckler, it seems like he is going to be out for this week, uh, or at least not practice. I imagine he's gonna, they're going to hold him out. But, um, yeah, Josh Kelly. Rams-Seahawks. The Rams put a fucking beating down on the Seattle Seahawks. Yes. Um, yes, Stafford throws for 334 yards, looks like himself. 2-2 Atwell, Puka Nakua, they were on the receiving end of all of that. Uh, I think I would be um, very happy there. Uh, Cam Akers, man, um, I just don't understand why the Rams hate Cam Akers, why Sean, Sean McVay hates Cam Akers. Um, he, just, he just doesn't – I don't know. He just does not like him for some reason, but – um, that seemed like one of our bigger swing and misses was Cam. I don't know that he's going to get opportunity to be the bell cow there. I think Kyron Williams looks like his role is pretty, pretty big in that offense. So I would probably be getting Kyron Williams and prioritizing him over Josh Kelly, um, probably over any running back. Um, I don't know. That was, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean Cam Akers, I you know he's still gonna get, um, uh, uh, uh you know he's still gonna be involved there. But I I could definitely see Kyron kind of taking over uh, as the lead back. He did look a lot better. Yeah, I think he is the lead back right now. So um, Puka Nakua in the 
Cooper Cup roll got 10 catches for 119 yards. Um, so Puka is looking like he's the real deal. Yeah, at uh, least for the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Geno Smith losing by 17 at home um, to a team that is projected to be last in the conference. Um, yeah, this was the upset of the week, right? To me, that's just kind of as expected with Geno. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I think the line was probably like three and a half, four. So I don't think it was anything crazy. Yeah. Um, Gino now goes to Detroit week two. Uh, so I don't, I don't have much to say about the Seahawks, honestly. No, they, they just struggled. And, uh, Zach Charbonnet wasn't involved as, as many people would have expected. Um, but that game was slipping away from him. So, um, just all around bad, bad news for the Seahawks. Gino's trash. <clears throat> Shocker. Um, <laughs> Cowboys right, at Giants. I have absolutely nothing to say about this Holy game. Holy shit. That's what I have to say about this game. Holy shit. That Cowboys defense looks fucking awesome. And, you know, we said it. We said it on a red light, green light. Don't start Daniel Jones. And look what he went out and did. I mean, the guy just you got fucking said it. mauled. You okay. said it. I said it. Sorry, let me correct. The, I went out and said, do not start Daniel Jones, and look what fucking happened. And, I mean, Jesus that. Christ. That was, this, this, was a, this was a brutal game. Brutal. Yeah, I'd be happy if I was a Pollard owner. I'd be happy if I was a CD owner. Um, so um, those are a couple promising – um, those are a couple promising, you know, as expected, uh, roles in that offense. Uh, but yeah, overall, I got nothing to say. I don't have anything to add for the Giants. Yeah, we can, we can move on. I just wanted to say that. Holy shit. Defense. That defense is fucking really good. Yep. Uh, and then Bill's Jets. I mean, story here is obviously Rogers feel absolutely really? awful for him. Um, him and Dobbins going down is just really sad. Uh, this is so. likely a career ender for Rogers, right? Where I mean, at at his age, coming back from a, a an Achilles injury, like this is. I'm not saying that it's not possible, especially with this. Ending. I I would say so too, but I mean, obviously, with the sports medicine these days, and uh, you know, things are uh, the turnaround for injuries is a lot faster uh, as the years progress, but. I don't know, man. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers with his age can come back from this. So it's terrible to see four plays in all you Jets fans like that sucks. Yeah, honestly, fuck the Jets fans. I don't really care about y'all. But for <laughs> Rodgers in his career and his Hall of Fame career to go down this way, I, I feel really bad for him and and kind of his, you know, his the ending of his career. So, yeah, it's, it's just terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the Jets defense, man, you, we said it earlier, Jets defense looks really fucking good. Uh, turned the ball over, what, four times uh, on these Bills offense. Um, James Cooks looked really good. Uh, he was the running back that was basically the only running back involved there. Um, Damian Harris got some looks, uh, a couple targets, but I uh, really like what I saw from James Cook. And then Stephon Diggs is Stephon Diggs, you know, 13 targets, 10 receptions, 102 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, um, that offense should should get a lot better. I mean, Josh Allen, the fact that he hasn't cleaned up these stupid mistakes that he's making is really concerning. Yeah, was uh, he has to turn it around and have a big year. Otherwise, um, I would probably look to start cleaning house there in Buffalo. You can't give them this loaded of a roster and them not do anything with it. So Allen's got to figure it out quickly. Yeah, I think he will. Um, but it's more so about too. it's more about cleaning up those uh, those just bonehead turnovers. So that's coaching. Um, so we need to see that improve. Hey, how about Brees Hall, man? Brees Hall is who we thought he was. Um, he's a beast. Garrett Wilson he looked, he looked is good. a beast, but uh, yeah. I am not confident owning uh, really anyone on the Jets right now well, besides Brees Hall. To be fair, man, with Rodgers going down four plays in, like you could say Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson beat the Buffalo Bills. 
you know, no, the Jets defense did Zach Wilson, yeah, Zach, Zach Wilson and the Jets. Zach Wilson was quarterback for the entire game after after four plays. So he was um, dog shit. Yeah, he was. And the Jets still ended up winning. So his QB rating was twenty two point six. Um, the eighty one point four. His QBR was twenty two point six. Oh, OK. I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that. But the Jets still won with Zach Wilson at the helm. So. Okay. Well, I would be very, I, I would be very upset if I was a Garrett Wilson owner that drafted him in the first round or the early second. So one hundred percent. But Brees Hall, I mean, he's going to still have an awesome. I think he's still going to, you know, have a great season. Um, but yeah, that would be very concerning for me as a. Really, any receiver, Wilson was the main one, but like Lazard, if you thought he was going to do anything this season, he's not. So, do you think this um, helps uh, Brees and Dalvin Cook have a have a better season? Not helps, but it's certainly not Dalvin. But um, Brees, like, they're going to have to really lean on those two for yeah. them to have a good season. I don't think it helps. I never think an offense getting worse helps. So. Um, yeah, sucks. Yep. All right. Um, that kind of gives our week one reactions a wrap. Um, 